In this episode of Expedition Almost Zimbabwe, Joe speaks Hornbill, Casey takes some photos of chickens, Chickens? <laughs> Graham bites a tree, <laughs> and Caleb gets excited. I'm being excited to be in Gioska today. <laughs> Right, so we are departing Kazuma today. We're heading to Wangi. We're gonna head down to past Panamatenga into Robbins. We're gonna check into the park at Robbins and then from there down to Dandari Pan. Wangi is Zimbabwe's oldest protected area. It was given game reserve status in 1928 and promulgated as a national park in 1930. Not only is Wangi Zimbabwe's oldest national park, it's also its largest national park. At over 14,000 square kilometers, it is huge, and it has a massive population of elephants that is estimated somewhere between 40 to 45,000 elephants. Our first night in Wangi National Park was spent at Dandari Pang. The Pang is right on the northwestern edge of the park and it's surrounded by teak forest. Through the teak forest was this web of well-trodden game paths that came from all angles towards the Pang. It felt very ancient, very remote, really beautiful and very, very far from the Wangi main drag. Yeah, we've arrived here, it's five o'clock, but the sun's still pretty high, still pretty hot. The days are definitely getting hotter. It's only gonna get hotter as the trip progresses, but yeah, all good. Spirits are high, all good. Oh, 100%. Ah, yeah. <laughs> ah sure, 100%. <laughs> the plan for this leg of the trip was to explore the southern section of Wangi, which is more remote, less visited and there's less available information on exactly what the conditions of the road is like, what the, if the pans have any water in them, ETC. So we knew that we were going to be in for a bit of an interesting time, a lot of uncertainty and possibly some bush clearing as well. Little did we know what we had actually signed up for. We're leaving Dandari this morning. We're a little bit uncertain. We don't know if the road even exists today. So uh, if it turns out to be too, too testing, um, we'll, we'll make a plan B. Big day today. Huge. I got the privilege of driving, me and Joe, and Caleb in the back here. This is the fun car. This is where it happens, people. <laughs> Boring cars outside. <laughs> what do you think? Woo, it's a party! <laughs> Caleb, I, what I, do you think? Uh, it's been a nice time here. At, uh, Are you excited to be in the girls' car today? Yes, I'm being excited to be in girls' car today. Yeah. I'm very happy yeah. and it will be a nice time driving. Uh, sure, thank you very much. The plan was to drive this access road parallel to the border with Botswana, all the way down and head on out through the southern section of the park. It didn't take long for that plan to start unraveling. About three minutes out of camp and the first road that we had designated as not a road um, turned into an elephant park. So yeah, it's punctured terrain and it's yeah, it's gonna wreck the vehicle, so it isn't even wide enough for a vehicle. So yeah, we've got plan B, um, the other route that I marked, um, and we're gonna see what that one holds now. What do I think? <laughs> um, I don't really think anything right now. <laughs> I don't know, what do I think? What do I think about the road building plan? I don't think you can build this road. This is not a road. Hapana and Zira, this is a gua sha. This is a game path, not a road. It's the wrong road. That's what I think. We should have known. 
We should have listened to that first kilometer. We were in for one hell of a long couple of days of bush clearing. But that sadly didn't deter us. On we kept going. Bye, Bob. Bye. Plan B involved a lot of bush clearing, a lot of slow, bumpy, hot, long hours in the car. And things were starting to unravel a little bit. Eventually we got tired of all the bush clearing, all the bumping along the roads, and made the call to stop for lunch. Right, so we are half past one. Uh, we've been hacking our way through um, yeah, roads that haven't been used as roads for 10 plus years, so it's been quite uh, slow going. Lots of PT, but um, yeah, we've made good time. And yeah, we're gonna, we found a nice pan here. We're just gonna take, take a lunch break and then figure out where we're going to end up tonight, but uh, certainly the road was now just an elephant path, so um, yeah, but otherwise going well, not much game in there, um, I think just snow water, so we, we did see those two groups of big elephant bulls, which was magic, uh, that's the last pans that were pumped, so yeah, nice to be around, a bit more activity now. Do you want stems, Bucky? After lunch, we set out once again to find a campsite where we could spend the night. driving since about half past eight this morning. It's 20 past five now. We did have a lunch break, rather special at a pan, uh, a natural pan, it, there was no borehole, and a huge breeding herd of elephants came down to drink, which was really cool. They'd taken a while to suss us out, eventually came down. Anyway, had lunch, packed up, continued driving, hoping to find the next designated campsite with water. There was no water at that pan, so we pushed on for another 10 k's to this pan. Again, completely dry, so we've called it a day. We're about to set up camp. I think it's quite cool. It's going to be special. Big, big, big wide sky for stars. Uh, no moon, so yeah, even though there's no water, it's going to be a nice quiet quite special evening. Yeah, a lot of bush clearing and uh, yeah, just tough going, hot temperatures, bush clearing, cutting, cutting. And uh, we pushed south probably further than we had originally planned to, but we've, we've been coming further south hoping to get to some big pans um, with water and uh, they are dry. So yeah, glad we've got about 150 litres of water um, on the vehicles for tonight. So we're going to dry camp here, no water in the pan. So yeah, beautiful sight here, we've got a fire going. We had a good day here, Caleb. Yeah, we did. We solved the world's problems, Caleb, myself and Casey. 
big long discussions yeah. mm -hmm. on a big long drive yeah. <laughs> just bore ah, sure, Caleb how did you enjoy with the ladies today ah, it was a very nice day with ladies <laughs> While Casey was our driver she was driving very well and uh, enjoyed very well sure Casey how did you drive Bucky, so lacquer. We just parked, uh, like I said earlier, an aircon. We ate snacks, we get our chamimbas even bigger, <laughs> and had lots of chats. Graham, what do you think of the scratches on your car? <laughs> I think everyone was having a joyride, and you and I were toiling at the front. <laughs> that is a true story. hunches. <laughs> The next morning, we decided the best thing to do would be to drive to Joseph Anini, find a tourism camp, and ask for water. So we're on the, on the Trucks for Africa um, map for Wangi. They're going to come up with a more detailed Zimbabwean one, but we've pretty much come down into this neck of the woods. And we're now down somewhere around here. We're about 35 k's from Joseph Anini in this bottom section. So we've We've picked up old roads all the way through and tried to follow water points. And then we were, due to lack of water, we've been pushed closer to the known water point. I just didn't want to spend three days in Yao with, without an opportunity to, to refuel with water. So, yeah, we're going to head to Joseph Nini. Thankfully we found a camp and they were kind enough to let us fill up our water tanks. By now we were looking for any kind of entertainment and Joe used this opportunity to practice hornbill. <laughs> Are you communicating? Yes. I'm a little bit worried about my toes. I'm trying to get them to come on my hand. Go on the floor and then they'll come. Wow. Shame I feel bad there's not enough. Oh, on the wing. So now we had water, which was great, but we were not interested in another day of driving in search of tripans. It was decided to scrap the entire plan and do the sensible thing and go to the Wangi substation at Makona and ask for some help and guidance. We're at Makona Base Station, National Parks. We've come to ask for a little bit of assistance and advice because we're basically trying to find somewhere to stay with water, shade, animals, something to look at, something to do. Uh, hasn't been the most successful day today. Um, but on the plus side, there are some cracking chickens at the substation. Beautiful hens and the biggest oh, and the cutest little tiny little baby chickens and then there's a huge ass cockerel running around um, but yeah to keep it brief we've seen a lot of elephants some good birds and not a lot else we yeah wangi's been a lot of trees and dried pans to be honest and driving and driving, lots and lots of driving. But tired of driving, to be honest. Casey, Buckle. how's the wildlife photography going? Chickens? 
and that's it. No, the South Any worms. good good photos of chickens? Uh, some it's the only live thing we've suppose. seen for the last three days, I think. Thankfully, the park staff at Makona allowed us to set up a campsite at a pan near the Makona substation uh, where we could spend our last two nights in Wangi. Okay, so are those Mapani flies? Oh, they are wonderful, back. absolutely wonderful. Don't know how anyone could get annoyed with them. Yeah, great, great pan here. Yeah. We're in some camel thorn trees and uh, yeah, great sight with the pan in the background. Um, been a hot afternoon, so we've just been laying low, but we're going to make the most of Wangi, probably spend two nights here before we head out through to Chulochu and then Buloe. But I was good, I'm good mate in this port. So it's not actually, put, it's not actually in this port. Wangi National Park has probably been the first one where, I don't know, it's not, it hasn't been terrible by any stretch of the imagination. It's been really beautiful, but it is just a very vast, scrubby park. <laughs> um, certainly the parts that we've seen of it, very hot and only getting hotter. Um, Mapani flies bugging a few of the team members. Um, and lots of dried pans that we've come across. So it hasn't been maybe what we thought it would be. Certainly the route we've taken down the south. So we've just had a discussion around the breakfast fire, suds of porridges, coffees, and a vote was held. And it was decided that we would pack up and head back to, sorry, pack up and head to Bulawayo for an earlier arrival and a little bit of R&R, &R, get some washing done, restock some groceries, blah, 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 rather than stay another night here. Yeah, it's beautiful, there are some beautiful trees, but the pan is pumped by a generator all night long. Ooh, 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 ooh. And it feels like you're in a nightclub and you're in your tent. <laughs> so yeah, we're not, we're not keen for another night on the, out on the town. We want some peace and quiet, hopefully a good night's sleep, hot shower, fresh hot food. I think the route that we've taken over the last four days has been uh, largely uncertain from the outset. The whole intention was to try and explore a section of Wangi that not many people had, had done for a long time. And certainly that is what transpired when we tried to take some of the roads we had, we had uh, identified. So we, we're gonna leave Wangi a day earlier um, on our original sort of intended itinerary. Um, but yeah, sighting's not as good as the northern parts of the park. I think something to do with, with really the water. Um, and it's really a wild, rugged wilderness down here. And we just haven't, haven't seen the Wangi that we would have liked to have seen in terms of game sightings, but a really special place to explore. And it's just, thousands of kilometers, square kilometers of, of wild bush. So yeah, on to Bulawayo and uh, the adventure continues. Next time on Expedition Almost Zimbabwe. This episode, we're in the Matopos National Park. We got up very, very early. It's freezing cold. Bambata Cave. We're gonna find it. We're gonna look at it. Yeah, cool spot. Okay, on your marks, get set, go. 